Hello, I'm Wendy and this is my Summer Bay Studio. I thought you might like to have a look around where I actually create my work and what I call my studio, which is not a big separate place in my house or somewhere else, but just a small place. So I'm, I think one of the reasons I'm suggesting this or taking you on this little tour is because I think a lot of people stop themselves from making art because they don't have the space or the time or whatever but sometimes you can carve out some small space and work on small projects and you can still be creating. So this tour is going to be um, sort of the facts of my life as far as creating art goes and this is where it begins. The camera is in the middle of my kitchen. Um, you can tell by here's the fridge which has you know, photos and the usual magnets and stuff on. Um, I have a dishwasher that is 43 years old. It just keeps going. And bookshelves that kind of separate kitchen from studio. And I'm, I'm a writer as well as an artist, so books are one of my passions. Collecting them is uh, kind of tricky when you live in a small space. And I do cull, you know, regularly, but I've got cookbooks and cookbooks and big books um, like atlases and stuff. My husband is crazy about aviation so he's got some books. We've got encyclopedias which are, you know, who has those nowadays? He's actually reading his way through them. We've got photo albums and craft books and gardening books or photo albums and and old books and novels and just a combination of things. Right here, I've got my high school graduation dress. Let's see if I can pull this out of the way. I keep my scarves on top of this dress form, and here's my high school graduation dress, dress which I designed and my mom made for me. So I always love this dress. I don't fit it anymore. However, you know, who does? <laughs> I've got more books here. In this area, I've got all the books that I've done with my clients. I've spent several years editing and doing book design. And then the rest of these are novels and whatever. Um, some of those are mine as well. And then I'm going to try to keep this from wiggling too much. Over here, I've got storage space. And I used to have a store and I needed display units. And now I use those display units for storing things. Looking into my studio space, you can see I've, I've got more books over here. I created this so that I would remind myself to focus, focus, focus. And I love flamingos and I collect flamingo things. So, And the, the bookshelves themselves, as you, as you can tell, have all kinds of stuff stored on the front as well. And I have this scraggly palm tree in the corner. Down here I have a huge drawer unit with flat drawers and some canvases right there just leaning up. Behind it I've also got some other things stored. I found this unit in a church that was being torn down. It was an old, old building and they were going to burn the thing and I found this and I asked if I could have it. The only problem was it was it had been built in the room that it was in. So in order to get it out and to use it, we had to cut it in half. And you can see the line there where it was cut so that it could come out the door. But this has been a really wonderful thing to have. I can't say I love the color. I never did, but I never got around to changing it. And I, I store all my original paintings in there that which are almost 100% watercolors, plus papers and just a host of things. I've got a couple of easels that I have and lots of supplies. In this area, I have a collection of books that are all illustrated because I love illustration and I wanted to see, I, I just like collecting illustrated books, seeing what other artists are doing and so I keep these on the edge here. They, they look like they're going to come flying off, but they don't because 
Over here I have that big vase which is full of rocks so that the books don't push it off and then it looks like it's going to come off the end any moment but it won't. The top of this unit is also really really useful because it's such a big surface. So here's where I keep a lot of my my different supplies and necessities. So just a little tour of what happens here. Uh, this is a bottle of water, just spray bottle. I keep my old jar with water. My Some of my watercolor brushes and other brushes, some are watercolor, some are not. This is a watercolor brush, but the big ones go over here. Um, these ones, I don't know how they got in there, but that's not where they go. These are glues that I use for journaling and junk journaling and creating collages and things like that. You'll notice that I use a lot of these little pails to organize things. I have bowls here that I'm using for mixing paint and, and then I've got some of these little binding things for my endless journal that I've been working on. In the back here I've got sketchbooks and more tubs for things and then up above I've got in this space here I've got inks and ink um, pens and things like that. So that's that section there. Now moving over, this is my worktop and so what I've got here is paint brushes. Um, this is one of my mug designs that I had on a shop a while back. So I've got new brushes for acrylics, my palette knife, um, I've got watercolor brushes here and some glues that are standing on their heads on purpose. I'm just gonna go and shut off that light. That way you don't get the glare from it. So this is where I do my filming. I have my camera mounted on this so that it faces down and I bought this big boom arm to in order to do that and when the camera's on it the weight of it causes it to hit the bottom of that bookshelf which keeps it really solid and it's it's um, on a tripod as well and then for lighting I've got two of these lights one here and one behind me I also have this light which is uh, for doing really fine work so it's got a light and it also has a magnifying glass and then I've got this little lamp for just close up. I have a little fan for drying paint and for keeping cool when it's the lights get really hot. Plus I have a ring light over here which is adjustable which sheds good light. Now in order to to kind of corral everything and keep it somewhat organized, I have all these little pails in different places and I just put different things in them so some of them have glue some of them have art pens some of the like here we've got palette knives and I've got brushes and markers and everything else and then in the back where you can see right there I have a little toy collection that I've I've kind of collected over the years and then People have given me things like, you know, my kids will give me something for a present because I just like playful things. On this side, I've got Prismacolor pencils. Hold on. And more markers. And then here I have the, just some flowers and a little string of, of lights that go, that turn on. And I use that just to kind of dress up my video when I'm working right here. This is my paint palette. I just finished a painting, so I'm just waiting for that to dry and then I'll, I think I'll just cover it up and see if I can save the paint. But since I don't have a plan to paint with it right now, um, I don't, I think I might just end up tossing it. And looking this way, Uh, underneath here, the edge of this table, I've got gesso and matte medium things for acrylic painting. And then, um, 
Over here I've got my watercolors. So this is this is the watercolor set that I've used the most lately. And then I also have my big palette which I've used for years which has a lot of other colors in it. So it's quite a compact space as you can see but it's handy because I'm right-handed and it's right here for me. And recently I purchased this unit to go underneath my my art table and keep my acrylic paints in because I just recently started concentrating on learning to use acrylics and I've got washi tape along here and then canvases in the bottom and some brushes that I I found at a dollar store and it seemed too good a deal to leave there underneath I, because our storage is so limited in our house, I I just store whatever I can. I've got some easels there for display, doing shows, and and behind that, that polka dotted thing, I have it's actually a travel bed for my grandson. Because my daughter said instead of bringing it back and forth, how about if I leave it here? And I'm like, okay, um, but this is the only place in the house that would fit it. Now, moving over this way. Oh, I just wanted to mention about my table. I'm just going to see if I can pan back a little bit. My table is actually an antique drafting table, and my brother gave it to me. He found it at a, at a demolition site. He's a builder, and they were knocking down the house, and it was going to go in the garbage, I guess, and he rescued it for me, and it's been wonderful because you can kind of get a sense of scale how big it is. And it's also adjustable. The only problem I had was it, it moves a little bit when I'm doing videos. So I had my husband cut a 4x4 here just to prop it so that it wouldn't do that. Now over here I have more storage. And let me see how's the best way to do this. I think I'll just hold it. I hope it's not making you dizzy or or worse, nauseated. Um, I have this drawer unit. I keep small pieces of watercolor paper here in, in this drawer. And then I have a little light table here so I can do tracing if I want to. I started storing a lot of stuff for journaling and junk journaling in here. I've got stencils, quite a few stencils. And then I've got um, some other craft things. In this drawer, I've got ribbons and trims and elastic and all kinds of things like that. I wonder if I can just stand this up. Okay, um, down here I've got this one. No, that's all the trims and things. These are papers and cardstock. And then in the bottom, I've got um, some tissue paper and some basically some odds and ends, a hole punch, some clay. And then in the very bottom, I've got these kind of paints for, for doing craft projects and lots of them. I've had those for a long time, so I need to actually go through them. Over here, I have a stool, should I want to sit down while I work, which I don't usually. I usually stand up, but I can if I want to. And I keep a couple of rags there all the time because painting and making art is messy. So in this corner, which is behind me when I'm working, I have uh, I have a little piece of art that I made on the wall. I've got um, sketchbooks in this big box, and because my space is limited, sometimes I just stick things where I can. In in this one, I have forget oh that's uh, extra paints and different sets, and then. On top of it, I've got some papers that I cut out of magazines, I've got a scoring board, and then above it I've got um, ephemera pieces in these little bins. So I keep things like this in, in little bins, and then bigger pieces like this in the bigger bins. 
And in this section, I have paper scraps, uh, paper for junk journaling. Um, I've got these stickers. I also have a glass uh, craft board, I guess you could call it. I haven't, I had to stop using it. I love it, but I had to stop using it because the lights, when I was filming, the glare was just too much off the glass. And here I've got pieces of paper. It's like six by six scrapbook paper. This is the, uh, the binder I use for storing ephemera pieces. I keep it there. And I've got magazines, art magazines, home decor, things like that in that section. I closed the, the blinds because it was reflecting too much. I, I have this tin, which is, which is a Caran d'Ache from the company in Switzerland that makes those. I just got the, the tin. And I uh, keep my my gel sticks and my Jane Davenport color sticks in that one because they fit. And in this, I got this from my son-in-law. He won it when he was working at an art store. And in this one, I keep my my all my double-ended markers plus some more. I've got these King Art um, gel sticks. So that's handy right there, and I, I kind of lack surfaces, so I have to, like, I do pile stuff up because I don't really have a lot of choices. Right, in this area here, um, this is also behind me while I'm working. I've got, um, a, almost like, this is one I did just the other day in a different video. Um, I've got some paints here that I just rediscovered in my things. These ones are... Um, chroma colors, so I want to start experimenting with those again. And then I've got books that I've collected that I've cut paper, cut ephemera out of, and you know, like like this Country Diary book by Edith Holden, I've cut a lot of paper out of that and st different things like that. These are the journals that I've been working on. Uh, I've got a little thing here for, for stamping, I forget what you call that. And then some other journal projects that I've, I've worked on. I've made this envelope in one of my videos, which is gorgeous. And this is for my endless journal, these different pages. And I did a video on that. I'll put the link below for that one. And this is my newest journal, which I've just begun. And this is the one I did the, the uh, painting trial on to see how, how we do with the sticky pages. and. That's, the jury's still out on how that's going to work. And then Altered Book, uh, different journals that I've made in my videos. And then this is um, the mini travel journal I did a video on and just some trim for that. And then below that I have, I bought these little drawer units which uh, are really handy. I've got stamp pads and, and the acrylic blocks and, and some stamps in here and a bunch of cling stamps in here. And then on top of it, like I said, I lack surfaces, but I've got some more of these little acrylic blocks, and some corner cutters, some other stamps, an ancient book in case I, I need to have more paper if I want some more old paper. This one is um, a Zane Grey. I think it was in my mom's, my mom's books when we cleaned out the house after she passed away and it's, I mean the paper is beautiful and soft so there's lots you can do with things like that. In this one I've got um, butterfly ephemera. I'll just put them all in together. And I've got some other punches and some other uh, rubber stamps and in here I've got my, my sealing wax kit and all the, all the pieces that go with that. I've also got below, I've got, well, let me show you. I've got uh, this easel for plein air painting. Um, my daughter found that somewhere and gave it to me. I've got some antique magazines, which I'm kind of in the slow process of, of taking pictures of or scanning and making printables for. And then over to this side, I have um, all my watercolor books and art how-to books. These are 
travel books and health books. Um, I have a good friend who's a librarian and she came over one day. I helped her paint her walls and she helped me sort my library out. I've got some more art books here. I've got some more um, illustrated books here. I've got dictionaries here. I uh, like different languages and bird books and stuff like that. I've got Christian books on the top. I've got there's one of my lights that I have in the back and then I've got writing books here and business this is kind of more writing these, these are business books and then I've got my happy planner punch for for my endless journal and more business books so that's my tour um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you you can see that you don't need masses of space uh, sometimes it's quite frustrating for me to just not have much space and then what I usually do is shuffle things around, clean things out because you kind of need to clean things out regularly, things that you're not going to be using and or that you just don't want anymore. I cleaned out like boxes and boxes of books so that I could put in some of this storage um, earlier this year. We do have a three bedroom house. And this is supposed to be the family room, but it's like, you'd be a small family, which we are, but I took it over for my studio. And one of the bedrooms I use for my office, which I'll show you on another day. So I hope you enjoyed the trip around my little office space. And um, take a moment and subscribe to my channel if you would like to. And I'll see you next time.